Our universe is filled with strange objects that even scientists have trouble classifying. Some celestial objects that are kind of like a star and kind of like a planet but are actually neither. They are called brown dwarf. So let's learn about brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs are substellar objects that have masses between those of stars and planets, generally between 10 and 90 times the mass of Jupiter. They do not have enough mass to produce energy by nuclear fusion. Rather, the small amount of energy emitted by these objects comes almost exclusively from the heat stored in them during the collapse of the parent gas cloud from which they formed. Brown dwarfs therefore gradually cool and fade with cosmological time. Discovery of Brown Dwarfs Chives Kumar first theorized the existence of substellar objects called brown dwarfs, although he initially classified them as black dwarfs. He classified these objects as celestial bodies that didn't have enough mass to sustain nuclear fusion. As black dwarfs were already classified as the later stage of a cooled-off white dwarf, Jill Tarter recommended the use of brown dwarf for differentiation. The first brown dwarf was only confirmed in 1994. Although brown dwarf stars were suspected to exist from as long ago as the early 1960s, the first possible candidate brown dwarf was only discovered in 1988 during an infrared search for white dwarf stars. However, the first true brown dwarf star, now designated Tade 1 located in the Pleiades Open Cluster. Formation of a brown dwarf Stars are born in stellar nurseries which appear as a giant molecular clouds. These interstellar clouds have incredible density and size. Inside these molecular clouds are individual regions with higher densities, where the accumulation of a large amount of dust and gas occurs. These regions are called clumps. Star formation starts from these clumps, and gravity must overcome the high forces and density for the accumulation of dust and gas to collapse into a functioning star. When the gravity overcomes the other forces, and when the molecules are subjected to sufficient pressure and heat, they ionize to become a protostar. The protostar must gain mass and become very dense at its core to sustain nuclear fusion, which enables it to burn and be luminous. The stars that are successful in doing so become a main sequence star. Some stars are unable to gain enough mass and are not dense enough in their core to sustain a fusion reaction. These stars are known as brown dwarfs. Types of brown dwarfs. Brown dwarf stars have been divided into four spectral classes types M, L, T, and Y, and occur in a wide variety of colors, mostly invisible to human eyes within these classifications. However, brown dwarfs that emit light, that can be seen by human vision, would most likely appear magenta or dark orange or red. Spectral class M, these stars have a temperature of less than 3,500 Kelvin. These are stars are almost in red dwarf territory and many scientists believe they belong in that classification. This spectral class consists of titanium oxide TiO and vanadium oxide VO molecules. Spectral class L. This class has substellar objects and very low mass stars in it. They are known as L dwarfs. Their spectral band consists of metal hydride bands iron hydride, chromium hydride, magnesium hydride, carbon hydride and alkali metal sodium iodide potassium iodide, cesium iodide, rubidium iodide. There are 900 identified L dwarfs. Spectral class T. This class consists mainly of brown dwarfs and is officially in the not a star zone. These T dwarfs would appear magenta to the human eye, not brown. There are 350 identified T dwarfs. Spectral class Y. These Y dwarfs are much cooler than their T dwarf compatriots. Typically very cool. These dwarfs have a temperature of less than 300 Kelvin. Planets orbiting around brown dwarfs and their habitability. The size of a brown dwarf is comparable to a very large gas planet 5 to 10 times that of Jupiter. Although it is unusual for a Jupiter-sized planet to orbit a brown dwarf, there could be two sub-brown dwarfs, rather than a planet, existing together. The size of the planets orbiting a brown dwarf are much smaller and the better part of them are likely to be terrestrial ones, rather than gas giants. Brown dwarfs also show the appearance of disks around them, much like other planets and stars. Why brown dwarfs are referred as failed stars? Sometimes, high-mass brown dwarfs can be thought of as almost stars. Add a bit more mass, and they might be lighting up the cosmos like stars. For this reason, scientists have often referred to brown dwarfs as failed stars. 
As a counter to that connotation, they are sometimes referred to as overexcited planets. Thanks for watching my video. Please like, comment and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more videos.